So he went ahead and decided that you want the Benjamin Recharge compressor, but there's still some general maintenance that you're gonna have to do with this compressor. And then one of those is changing the filters. And there's two filters to change. There's one that is in the hose, and then there's also gonna be one inside this cylinder here. And to change those, it's very easy. Let's take a look at the hose first and get started with that. It simply unscrews. It's a little bit of a lengthy screw. Screw comes off. You're gonna to wanna to take some tweezers, reach down inside, pinch out the cotton filter, and replace it. Now, I also unscrew this each and every time that I have finished filling a bottle, just to make sure that that filter is not wet. If it is wet, then I allow it to dry, again, helping to get rid of the moisture in the system. The second filter that you're gonna to wanna to do, like I mentioned, is in this cylinder here. And it's a little more complicated to get to. The instructions suggest that you can take this and let's unscrew it using a 30 millimeter wrench on the top here. When I attempted to do that the first time, it was stuck. So I was not able to do it without removing a couple other pieces. And I'm gonna go through the lengthy process of doing that just in case you have the same issue that I do. So to do so, you're going to need a couple of tools. You're going to need a 10 millimeter wrench. You're also going to need your 30 millimeter wrench. And since I don't have one, this is an adjustable wrench and then a Phillips screwdriver. So where do we begin? Well, in this case, I want to begin by releasing the copper tubing that is pushing the air into the cylinder here. And to do that, I'm going to use a 10 millimeter wrench and unscrew the last uh, connecting bolt here on the end. And of course, I've already loosened it up for purposes of doing the video. Once it is loose, you should be able to, using your fingers, unscrew it. Now I push in the copper tubing, you see me doing that? And that allows to take any of the pressure off of the bolt. And once the bolt is off, I can then release the copper tubing. And that's gonna make sure that this stays nice and clean and not bent or any of those things. Next, what I'm gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and take the pressure gauge, has a wire on the back side that allows for the automatic shutoff, and I'm gonna to have to unplug that. So to do so, we're gonna spin this compressor around, and you'll see the one black wire here. And that black wire is very easy to reduce or release release the black wire so it is no longer connected to the electrical system. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the compressor is unplugged before you do any of this. We'll spin the compressor back around to the front. And here we're gonna have two screws that we will have to release. And to do though, you're gonna use your Phillips screwdriver and go ahead and unscrew them. Fairly simple process. Now I notice I'm going to hold on to the cylinder up top. That way it doesn't fall into my compressor or fall and get damaged. Once those two screws are out, you have your release valve. You're going to want to undo it and go ahead and take it all the way out. Now this cylinder should be loose. And then before I take it off, I'm going to spin it all the way around one last time so you can kind of get another opportunity to see it. And here it is. It is released from the back. The wire is off, the screws on the front have been removed, and now you'll notice that this whole cylinder comes off rather easily. Now as you take this off, you're going to notice there's a copper tube at the very bottom of the cylinder that's holding, held in there. And that is where the water condensation is released when you hit the um, relief valve or release valve here. So this is where the condensation blows out of the system. So you want to make sure not to bend that. Next, you're going to want to take a wrench or your 30 millimeter wrench, and you're going to want to unscrew the top of the system here. And once it is free, Okay, you will notice that there is an O-ring here. They do send replacement O-rings should it, uh, the cylinder be leaking out the top. And you're gonna look down in there and you're going to see a cotton filter in there. And this is where you're gonna need the tweezers to pull it out. So you're gonna reach down in there, 
grab the filter and pull it out. And you can tell that this one is a little dirty. So um, it is going to be good for me to go ahead and replace it. It is a little damp on the inside and to replace it, I'm going to grab one of the filters that they send and these are available online uh, through Amazon and different locations. Use the tweezers again, put the filter on inside, push it down to the bottom. It should be a nice tight fit. And then we're going to reverse the process to put it all back together. Down here, you're going to want to make sure you put the hose into the right place. There's a little spot for that copper hose to go out. Slide the copper tubing in here before you tighten it. That way it doesn't have any problems. And we're going to start by adding or putting in the Phillips screws. Make sure we put the relief or release valve back together. Spin the compressor. And we're going to see, we're going to want to make sure that we hook up the electronics again. And again, it's just make sure you get them oriented the right direction as plug and play. Make sure it's nice and tight. Spin it around to the other side. And then we're going to reattach the copper tube. Now I always hold this in and it should allow me to, just using my fingers, tighten that up. And once you get it screwed in there, you're going to want to snug it down, not too hard, but just snug it down so it's nice and tight to prevent any air from leaking. And again, you can check that um, as you test your compressor. And after that, that's all there is to it. You have now changed your air filters and you're ready to have the compressor run again. Until next time, make sure your pellets fly straight and your trigger pulls stay smooth and we'll see you right here on the Airgun Advisor.